Hi, Mesh Banker from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Now, this is some kind of unboxing. Look at this box of crayons. What about that? This is a large 20 kilowatt solar inverter from ABB that I have yeah, scraped up under my dirty nails. So uh, let's check out what's in the box. On the side of the box, we have a nice little 2D drawing or 3D drawing in the flat black. And if we move over here to the other end of the box, we can see this is the Trio model, solar inverter. On to Rio Solar. Ah, my friend. And you see that's made in Italy. And this is the uh, Trio 20 kilowatts outdoor model for 400 volt AC uh, mains connection. So let's just get this tape cut open. It reveals. Okay, so first here's a little sign that says contains one inverter, one wiring box, one installation kit, one bracket, one documentation kit. And there's a nice explosion uh, picture of how to take the whole box apart. So here, yeah, let's just dive into it. So first here we have what looks like a uh, wall mounting uh, kit. Yeah, we are not going to use that. Then here we have a Wi-Fi locker card for control unit. Well, that was not in the listing. Interesting. So here we have the quick installation guide and update notification. Comes with a uh, installation tip to the, uh, yeah, the normal MC4 um, solar contacts. There's uh, screws for the uh, wall mount that looks like uh, M8. Oh, it's actually M10. Some more cardboard. Mm, wow, that's huge. That's a little bit bigger than I expected. I hope for more packaging, but that really explains why this box weighs a good, I don't know, 100 kilograms. That's in that region. So this uh, looks like the, um, the wiring box. Take a look at that separately. But as for the big inverter down here, that's not coming up that easy. So let's get the string combiner opened. This is the uh, box for wiring up all the solar panels to the inverter itself, which was no joke getting up on that pair of uh, yeah legs there all alone. So this uh, luckily does not weigh that much, but uh, here we can actually uh, see a uh, the a AC mains uh, connector or the uh, feed through a uh, disconnector switch. And then there's actually MC4 connectors directly uh, on the panel here. So you just plug in your wires from the uh, solar panels. And over here is for yeah, peripherals. So let's uh, get the lid off and see what's inside. All screws have been uh, loosened up. So we can get the lid off now. Whoa! That is way more advanced than that I have ever imagined. There is actually two transient protections. There's a whole uh, control circuit up here with the uh, Ethernet ports. There's four of those, a lot of connectors. 
there is a uh, what seems to be a fuse for each there's actually eight fuses no 16 fuses wow that's like a fuse for each panel whoa look at that disconnector switch here that is like a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve throat disconnector switch. That's huge. I've never seen one with so many contacts on. Wow, this is really way higher quality and much more uh, components than I first expected. Well, that means I can't wait to look what's inside that. Here we also can see the, uh, ah, there's a plastic cover on here. That's why, okay, that's, there seems to be a plastic cover securing uh, the connector up to the inverter itself, but that seems to be a complete custom made eight high power pin um, where we have eight, four pluses and uh, four minuses and then all the control pins in the middle. So let's uh, wipe the warranty and take the inverter apart. Now there's a little control panel here at the front. Just has a power, alarm, uh, ground fault indication. Then escape, up, down, enter. And a few already uh, yeah, hard coded um, power options uh, per day total um, at power right now. And then there's a 100% scale over there. Now let's look at the side here. You can see the uh, model number again. Um, it's actually produced in week 38, 2016. And now you might wonder why would I go ahead and unscrew the lid and avoid my warranty for a, a very expensive solar inverter? Well, that's because this was not accepted on the positive list by the Danish uh, government that yeah, regulates uh, which kind of inverters you can put online on the, um, on the mains uh, here in Denmark. And it was actually up to the manufacturers to, um, to send in the data about their inverters uh, and uh, they would get yeah, taken up on this uh, list. And Power One or ABB did not do this because they are moving out of the solar business. Uh, I think they are selling off the, the business or something like that. But that is really a nice heatsink. I mean, check out the size of that. That's like a whole square meter of heatsink right there. And really high quality mounts for the wall mount. That's, that's really uh, professional stuff. But uh, so, so this is ver inverter is actually um, worthless in Denmark at least. And it's really too expensive to ship outside of Denmark. So I will uh, wipe the warranty by taking the lid open and yeah, maybe it can find a new home after all. Because if you have one of these installed already, you can replace it. But you cannot put this up in a new installation. So let's see if the lid wants to, wants to come off. Oh, I'm so excited. Ah, clearly I did not loosen the screws enough. Well, that is what happens when you do one take videos, no script, not much planning, but what you see is genuine. This is real, this is the first time I ever look inside one of these. And from what we just saw in the uh, cable box, I'm really excited about what we see inside the main inverter. So let's see. Oh, there it comes. Let's just have to watch the display here. Just comes off as a flat cable connector, like that. Wow, look at that input filtering. Huge chokes. 
that's 40 microfarad, one kilovolt uh, snubber capacitor sitting right there. What are these? These are relays. These are 50 amp relays. This is the uh, three-phased output uh, filter, a common choke. That's a three-phased uh, current uh, transducer. We have some large uh, mouse or TVS uh, sitting here. There's a little control board in the middle. And then up underneath this plate, I hope we can see the, uh, the power electronics. With the lid off, we can see the uh, six large output chokes sitting here at the back. Unfortunately, that did not reveal the power electronics itself. But I could look down under this metal plate and there is a huge uh, hinge sitting in each side and a rod going through. So that hinted me that this whole unit can actually be opened up. And I did not plan to do this, but I took a few fo photos so I could uh, reassemble it. So I had to dismount all the power electronics, all the control cables, everything in order to show you this, because this is insane. I, I never seen a inverter this size made completely with TO247 IGPTs and diodes. Just look at that. Just have to mount a little secure see here I mean seriously that is eight pieces of silicon per leg of just the output inverter so that's 24 switches down over here and we have 12 for the input side and there's a small housekeeping power supply here sitting here that's cute over here we have some Cree um, IGPTs. That must be the um, maximum power point tracking electronics uh, that sits here. Uh, as this is uh, directly the DC input from the uh, solar panels itself. And over here we have the three-phased output inverter. Um, I took some photographs of these uh, different switches. So I will show the data sheets along when, uh, when telling this as I can put these data sheets in afterwards so you can see what kind of uh, IGPTs and silicon is put all over the place. And all these large nice 40 microfarad uh, MKP uh, capacitors. The gray ones are actually 50 microfarads. But this is just one insane inverter. That is seriously over engineered. And just look at the heatsink. That heatsink actually comes up through the bottom of this uh, metal case. So it has been a good yeah, 10, 15 millimeters taller than uh, the one we saw. And it has been machined all the way off just to have these small um, yeah, extrusions come up. I do not see that this should be screwed down onto the large heatsink. This is one piece heatsink. But in order to not destroy this unit, but actually reassemble it and have a working unit, if I could find somebody to buy it, I will not tear this down any further. The inverter has a few interesting uh, design details. As we can see here, there's actually small neon bulbs placed uh, all around the uh, board for uh, indicating if the yeah, capacitors are charged or the power is just on. Here we can also see that the TVSs are um, the three-legged kind with a the, uh, thermal protection, but they also sit in, um, in sockets, so if they blow up, you can change them easily. The same goes uh, on over here at the output side. We can also see the MOVs, um, or varistors, uh, which we also had the blue ones over here, they also sit in sockets. And over here, there's also another neon bulb. So I also saw another a few neon bulbs underneath the, the lid. But check these out. These are actually test points. Those are some serious test points. That is for yeah, 50, 100 amps or so. And also nice gold uh, plated uh, screws there. They must be current conducting uh, since they are yeah, maybe brass plated all solid brass screws and check out the uh, current transformer here 
that could be uh, an in-balance uh, transformer so that it measures all three phases simultaneously and then just looks for a um, and they cancel each other out so if there's a ground leak uh, it would um, detect it as current actually flowing as they should cancel each other out but we can take a look at the part number and see what that is the uh, Wi-Fi logger card um, seems to be some kind of built-in option uh, that you can uh, add inside. It has a little pin connector that you connect to the uh, yeah main control board itself. Up here we can see the small antenna connector. There's a uh, kit here with uh, an antenna cable and a feed-through for one of the yeah, peripherals uh, cable feed-through ports. And a small Wi-Fi antenna. And then if we take a look here at the back side, you can use a software called AuraVision Plant Viewer for mobile or a AuraVision Plant Manager platform. Now I wonder what that costs, but it for sure ain't for free. So I hope you enjoyed the teardown, which took over a bit more than expected. And there the unboxing, which was the original plan of this ABB Trio 20 kilowatt solar inverter and I didn't even get to open the quick start guide well who needs that when you take it apart anyway but yeah this was massive so I really hope you enjoyed this and until next time see ya